Sailmakers whipping. Hello everybody, welcome back. And today's little exercise, what I've learned is I've learned how to do whipping. And what the idea of whipping is that it will actually prevent the end of a rope from fraying. So you can see some that I've done here and you usually use whipping twine or in my particular case, in this one here, I've used um, some nylon twine, which is tarred. And this, this is beautiful stuff and I'll put a link into this particular um, twine at the in the description below and also the other thing I'll put in the description below is other information you will need if you are doing this in a proper rope as opposed to for decorative decorative work because it not only is as you can see here not only is it decorative but it also serves a practical purpose in the end of the rope first of all to prevent it fraying and coming unraveled and then the second thing is it will protect it because and it's very secure in the way that it protects it as well and in this particular way of doing the sail makers whipping we don't need to use a needle as such okay so I'm going to in our little exercise today I am going to use thicker cordage than we actually require the simple fact is I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare the end of the my rope and then Let's get knotting and I'll see you on the other side. So what I've done here is I have prepared the end of my rope and in this particular case what I've done is part of the way down here just a thumbs width I have put a constrictor knot and if you don't know how to tie the constrictor knot there is a link in the description below to show you a video on how to tie the constrictor knot. And then once I've done that, what I've done is I've just, in this particular case, this is a synthetic um, rope as such. What I've done is I've melted the ends of my three strands here so that they remain separate and just unraveled them a little bit so that we can actually get our cordage through. Right, so the, ne and the next thing I've done is I've taken myself, in this particular case, some color line and the first thing that we do is that we want to pass our color line over one of the strands of our rope here. So what I do is I establish where I want to actually put my color line through. And usually you want to make your whipping equal to or one and a half times the size of the diameter of the actual rope that you are whipping if this is in a practical purposes if you're doing this for decorative purposes the choice is yours you know no no problems with that so the first thing I do is I'm going to pass so I'm going to select say for example this particular strand here and what I'm going to do is just form a gap there and pass my cord my color line my green line through that there so you can see here now I've just lifted it and I've brought it through there. I don't want to take too much through. And then the next thing I do is I just go around because what we're going to do is go through that strand there. So as you can see, I've passed it underneath this one. And what we're going to do is create a loop over this strand here. So I'm just going to put my Marlin spike through there like so, open up a gap and then take the other end of my color line here the green line and pass it through and pass it all the way through until so what we've basically done is we are now if you look here we've now formed a loop above that one strand there so let's just show that there's a loop above that single strand there and here I've got enough cordage and what we're looking for now is this we want to create a loop in here so we open up that loop a bit because that loop has to pass over so pull enough through to pass over our strands at the top there but we're not going to pass it over yet and then also this length here has to be long enough to tie a knot at the top as well but we'll see that as we go along and then the next thing I'm going to do is just line these up a little bit so that they're nice and square and symmetrical and then we now go on and we put turns of the green cord around my rope. So what I'm going to do is just wrap it around my rope like so. And we want to do it really as tight as we can. 
because if we pull it up as tight as we can, that rope is, oh sorry, that whipping will not shift at all and it will be very secure around our rope. Now obviously I've got my little loose ends getting into the situation there, but I just keep on wrapping around as tight as I can, keep going until we've wrapped as much as we want to. And don't forget, if you're doing it on proper rope here, you want to do about one and a half times the diameter is how far we wrap it round. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it decorative because I'm more of a decorative knotter than a practical knotter. And then just keep taking it around. And so you can see here, I'm pulling the turns round, keep going round as tight as I can until I've done enough. Okay, and I think in this particular case, I have now done enough. Right, so now that we've done that, what I can do now is I can take off my constrictor knot. So I'm going to pull that underneath there and pull off my constrictor knot. Right, so keep your, keep your fingers holding that top line because that top line wants to stay secure. And just turn your work round and just make sure you've got no gaps because you don't want any gaps as you do this. There we go. And now the next thing I do is this, right, this loop that we had here originally, what we want to do now is we want to follow, oh, I've let go there, hang on. We want to follow the actual, so you can see here, let's just, so fiddly. So you can see here, it's come, the loop is, that's my loop here, and my loop is on one side there, and then the, on the other side of that particular strand. And what we want to do is follow that strand up and then follow it up round and then pass our loop over that strand like so. And then when we've passed it over that strand there like so, I then take this bottom lead here and just pull up tight and make sure that strand goes right in behind so pull the green one as tight as you can and make sure that it goes tight in behind that strand that we are following up. And you can see instantly here now, we've got that nice, almost spiral effect running up there. The next thing I do is take the bottom green strand or color line that I've got there. And what I'm doing is I'm following it round like so and then bring it round to the other side. So let's show you here. Okay, so that is, that's got to follow that strand on that side. And what I want to do now is just bring it around like so, and then bring it to that point. The next thing I do is once I've got it at that point there, so if I just hold that in place there, you can now see that I've got a spiral effect going around all three following the actual strands themselves going up there. So the next thing I do is I pass it over or between the, that strand there where this, so my two leads are going to cross over at this point here. So there's my one end, there's my other end and what I do now is just tie a reef knot in the middle of that section there to secure it all. So I'm going to just get my reef knot, put the left over the right, like so, and then pull it down tight. So it goes tight into the center of my rope as so, and then take the left one and pass it over the right one to finish my reef knot off and make sure it snugs down into the center of my cordage, like so and then pull it down tight. There we go. And now you can see, now that I've done that, it's all nice and tight. You can see here now that we've got some nice whipping, nice sailmakers whipping around our rope here. And when you feel it, that is really, really rock solid and tight. And so it shouldn't make the rope any bulkier whatsoever. And then the final thing, just to finish it off is, 
The easiest way, you cut these off so that you end up with just a small section, but the easiest way is to relay the rope again. So relay the rope again, and then wrap it with some tape, and then just cut straight down with a knife so you end up with a nice end on your rope that is not too dissimilar to that there. And that's it. That is sail makers whipping. So once again, don't forget, there'll be more information in the description below. And if you want to know where to get hold, this is lovely stuff. This, this tarred line here is beautiful to work with. If you're a decorative knotter, this and other sizes, and I'll, I'll send you a link to the size chart as well for this particular cordage, it is beautiful to work with. It's like, it's like silk in your hands. It's wonderful. Anyway, so I'll send you that link. So once again, thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, you hated it, but please do leave me a comment. Show me pictures of some of your whipping. That'd be interesting to see and tell me what you do to secure the end or not secure, but prevent your ropes from fraying. Some people use back splices and a lot of sailors hate that, but tell me about it. Okay. Once again, thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye-bye.